This game right here just won't die. And today I'm gonna try and explain exactly why I think that is. It has been 16 years since this game was released. During that time, it has been taken over by sniper hacker bots on a regular basis. It has received almost no support from the developer, getting its last real major update almost six years ago. And while enduring all that, it recently just hit its all time play account record. Now to a lot of people, that sounds confusing. Very few games can do that. But I think there is a secret reason for this success. A reason that most players don't even get to discover until they are hundreds, if not thousands, of hours into the game. But once you realize this trick that TF2 pulls, it is almost impossible to leave. I've played a lot of games in my life. Star Wars Galaxies was one of the first, and it told me what it feels like to get immersed in an online community. I also played Overwatch. It showed me what it was to experience the excitement behind a game release and watch an entire new community come out of nowhere. I got to meet the developers, see the passion they had, and get an insight into the beauty of game development. And then obviously, there was Fortnite. Most people probably know me as the Fortnite guy. And as a creator, the ever-changing landscape, the live updates, and the pure creativity which I could express through insane strategies, traps, memes, and sky bases, it was just incredible. But while I love all these games, and they've all meant a huge deal to me, there is one game which likely developed my love for gaming more than any other. One game which to me was more immersive than Star Wars Galaxies, had community members with more passion than Overwatch, and much like Fortnite, had so much room for creativity, fun, and depth that after 5,000 hours playing it, I still feel as though I'm learning new skills and discovering new strategies. And that game is TF2. Now very quickly for the uninitiated, let me outline what exactly is TF2. TF2 released in October of 2007. It's developed by Valve and it's a first person shooter where you battle across a variety of modes such as Payload, King of the Hill, and Point Capture. In TF2, you play as one of nine classes split among attack, defense, and support. First up, we've got Scout. You run fast, you can double jump, and you get in close to enemies with your shotgun to deal devastating damage. Next up, there's Soldier. Armed with a rocket launcher, you've got solid mobility with rocket jumping as well as great area of effect damage. The final assault class is Pyro, who uses their flamethrower to burn enemies to a crisp and also has some very fun weapon combos, which deal bonus damage to burning enemies. Next up, we got a defense classes. Demo Man not only has a pipe bomb launcher, which deals massive damage on a direct hit, or minor damage if you miss, it rolls and explodes nearby. He can also lay sticky bomb traps to decimate enemies in a single blast. Then we got Heavy. Heavy has a minigun. It's called Sasha. That's... That's kind of it. Engineer is basically Bob the Builder. He makes sentries to guard areas, dispensers to hand out health and ammo, and he can place down teleports to move his allies to the front line. And now finally for the support classes. The medic probably fits this role the best as you use your medigun to heal up allies and after replenishing enough health, you gain an uber charge, allowing you to make your current healing target invulnerable for a few seconds. The sniper is, well, the sniper. You zoom in, shoot enemies in the head. Pretty simple. Oh, and he can also throw a jar of his literal piss onto people. But that's that's a whole other story. And then finally, Spy. This guy can literally disguise himself to appear as a player on the enemy team. And if he gets behind them, can kill any class with a single backstab. Sneaky bastards. Now, this is already a bit to get your head around, but buried within each class is a level of depth and complexity that for me is unmatched by any other game. Now, it's important to clarify what I mean by depth, because for every different game and every different gamer, depth can mean a million different things. For most shooters, it can largely boil down to aim, skill, strategy, and game sense. But TF2 adds one extra ingredient. Something which very few games do, which is a level of mechanical skill for each class you almost never see in FPS games. Now that sounds sort of confusing, so let me try and give you an example. Farah from Overwatch is a somewhat similar hero to Soldier, my personal favorite TF2 class. They both fire rockets, they both need to predict enemy paths and trajectories and attempt to hit direct hits. But in TF2, there's something extra special source. Both the Soldier and Farah have flight. In Overwatch, you use your jetpack to jump up, gain height, and fire down on enemies. But regardless of if you're a total beginner playing their first game, or a literal champion of the Overwatch League, that ability works pretty much the same. You press the button, you gain an almost identical amount of height, and no matter your skill level, 
there's no changing that. I do want to clarify, there are technically minor improvements you can make combining rockets and concussive blasts, but because the physics engine, those changes are pretty minor. Now let's compare Farah to the soldier in TF2. For a casual TF2 player, rocket jumping can look something like this. Already, it requires some skill. But to demonstrate the difference, let's compare the gameplay we just watched with a clip I got in my first game coming back to TF2 after not playing for years. Oh. Oh! oh. Yeah! Oh. Let's go, baby! Oh. Newzilk's back! Oh, actually Newzilk's it. back! He's still got it! This is why TF2 can be played for thousands of hours without even having a ranked system. For many games, a core way you feel improvement and growth as a gamer is when you see something like your in-game rank go up from bronze to diamond to champion. But in TF2, the growth and power you feel as a player through investing in a class doesn't just need to be validated by a rank. You can feel it, you can see it in every single game. I'm not saying that other games don't have that. Almost all games have that to a certain degree, but the level that TF2 achieves it to is just our match. For a normal player, basic jumps are all you need. But if you want to invest the time, a standard map becomes a playground. Optimize your speed by firing at the perfect angle off the wall. Use that speed to abuse the source engine bugs causing a ramp slide, allowing you to fire a final rocket at maximum speed to gain insane height and forward momentum and slap the enemy demo man in the face with a shovel. Another class that does this so well is Pyro. When people first start TF2, Pyro kind of appears like one of the most skillless classes in the game. You hold down your attack button, you run forward into the enemy, and you burn them all alive. One of my earliest TF2 videos was literally using my feet to play Pyro just to see how ridiculous it could get. Spoiler, it it went pretty well. But as you play more, you might start to play around with Pyro's alternate fire, which you can use to blast back enemies and even fire enemy projectiles like rockets back at them. Pyro can be a good counter for soldier when it comes to reflecting rockets. As long as you keep your distance as the soldier, they can't really threaten you. Unless you learn one of the most difficult pyro skills in the game, rocket jumping. Yeah, you know that, that thing I said the soldier did? Well, turns out Pyro can do it too. Now, how does this work? I'm going to show you the clip that I experienced the other day. However, I wasn't recording. Luckily enough, I managed to get the Pyro's POV and, well, it does a pretty good job of explaining. Pyros can deflect rockets down towards their feet and with a very precise flick can rocket jump themselves forward towards the enemy. And no matter what class you play, these skills exist. The spy was designed to be a stealth class. Disguise yourself to appear as the opposite team and backstab an enemy for an instant kill. But if you're found out, well, you deal almost no damage when an enemy's facing you. And again, for most players, that can be the limit of their spy experience. But meet trick stabbing. Caught by the enemy, quickly move around a corner as they chase you before strafing back around that corner to get behind them as they come around the corner to kill you. No corner nearby? Find the nearest staircase. And as they chase you, jump up and backwards over their heads to reposition yourself behind them for an incredible backstab. Playing demo man with a sword and shield instead of a grenade launcher? Well, charging at the enemy is is fun, but why stop there? Learn to trip and you go from covering 10 meters to being able to fly around the entire map in a single charge. None of these things are easy, but this community is so dedicated. They not only take the time to learn by themselves, there's an incredible feeling of community around teaching others as well. Like seriously, check this out. As you can see, you can get a speed boost from a wide range of different angles. You'll simply get a bigger speed boost if you're more accurate. The depth of TF2 is endless. And while some classes like Sniper have slightly less complexity in how you move and play, that doesn't limit your ability to learn new skills, play styles, and ways to adapt differently to enemy compositions or challenges. Now, let's meet the loadouts. As a 12v12, you can't really call TF2 a scissors, paper, rock style game. But each class gets to equip three weapons, a primary, a secondary, and a melee. Now, you remember how we just spoke about the insane depth that each of the nine TF2 classes has? Well, now try multiplying that by the literal thousands of loadout combinations within each of them. Soldier alone has almost 960 different weapon combinations he can use. And I know what you non-TF2 players are thinking. Ah, uh, Call of Duty actually has... Shut up. 
Shush, shush. Call of Duty has three weapons. The ones that shoot far, the ones that shoot medium, and the ones that I use when I'm camping in a corner with three claymores and a riot shield. Okay, that might be a slight exaggeration, but seriously, the difference between this and this isn't enough to bring any real gameplay depth. But now, let's look at TF2. And as always, we're going back to my one true love. The soldier. The stock primary is the rocket launcher. It's got four rockets in the clip, pretty solid area explosions, and by most game standards, pretty slow travel time. Now, doing a deep dive on every launcher option would take days, so let me try and rapid fire this. The direct hit, it's all in the name. Your rockets have 70% less explosion radius, so you gotta hit people right in the face. But in exchange for that, you get rockets that deal 25% more damage and move 80% faster, and deal mini crits, which is 35% more damage to people who were airborne, which just, oh my God, when you hit these, it feels so damn good. The black box is pretty simple. You get one less rocket in your clip, but you get 20 health when a rocket hits an enemy. The beggar's bazooka is, is kind of like the creation of a mad scientist who never actually got a science degree. You can load up three rockets at a time and unleash a barrage of very inaccurate rockets. But if you load too many, that rocket will explode in your face. But as usual, players found a way to turn this negative into a positive and it can also give you basically infinite rocket jumping. Now with the Liberty Launcher, you get faster rockets, bigger explosions, but 25% less damage. The Airstrike is up next and it's honestly kind of a pretty awful launcher to use when you're on the ground. But when you're airborne, it fires its rockets like a machine gun. And every elimination adds an extra rocket to your clip meaning after you go on a bit of a kill streak, you basically become a flying machine gun missile launcher. Then we got the cow mangler, which, look, I can't really recommend this one, but uh, you can do this cool charge shot that's people on fire, so it's kind of fun. You got the original, which shifts your rocket launcher to right in front of you and is just kind of an awesome throwback to Quake. And finally, you got the rocket jumper. It's the exact same as the stock rocket launcher, but it deals zero damage. Sounds dumb, right? Well, yeah, honestly, sort of. But if you want to fly around the map whacking people with a shovel, it's I don't want to walk through every detail of loadout, so let me try and go even faster on secondaries. By default, you have a shotgun. You can swap that to other weapons like the reserve shooter, which mini crits airborne enemies, the panic attack, which equips faster and fires in a bigger spread, as well as the bison. It shoots lasers. It used to be amazing. It was special. It was goddamn beautiful. Until Valve took it out behind the shed and Okay, I'm getting distracted. But hey, if you don't want a shotgun and you just want to fire rockets, we've got the gunboats. It reduces self-inflicted rocket damage to help you rocket jump everywhere. Or maybe the man treads, where landing on an enemy's head from height deals damage. Or maybe you're one of those weirdos who likes to help their team. Try out one of the banners. Build his charge, blow the horn, and give either a great offensive or defensive buff to your team. And we're still not done! You like flying? Equip the base jumper, deploy a parachute, stay airborne all day. Now, I'll be honest, as with most games, Soldiers melt weapons are less interesting. You've got everything from pickaxes, which increase your move speed as your health lowers, a sword that gives you health on kill, and my personal favorite, the Mark Garden, which deals 195 damage if you hit an enemy while you're airborne. Yeah! Oh, and then we've also got the frying pan. It's the same as the default weapon, but it's frying pan. Now I'm sure people are sick of hearing about weapon choices and I'm not gonna go through every class, but real quick, Medic's normal medigun can activate Nuba Charge to make you invulnerable, but you can swap that to a crit screen to make your target deal triple damage. Engineer is normally a defensive nest builder, but with the gunslinger equipped, he changes his normal sentry to this annoying piece of crap mini sentry that costs less and can set up in 0.3 seconds. And Demo Man can go from an explosive bombing class to a literal medieval knight. Okay, options. There's lots of them. While some people build their loadouts with the goal of eliminating their enemies and capturing the point, which, you know, is logical, there are some who take an entirely different take on playing TF2. Uh, and, and to introduce this concept, meet the Hoovy. To most people outside TF2, this section is going to make literally no sense. But jump in game and you'll often come across someone playing heavy who instead of firing $200 custom tool cartridges at 10,000 rounds per minute in your direction, will just sit there. Looking adorable. Handing out free sandwiches to anyone, friend or foe, who comes their way. You've also got Rancho Relaxo Engineers, who will just set up a chair in strange places and sit back for an entire round drinking beer. You might be asking, who would be dumb enough to do that? Well, I, I did. <laughs> for six entire videos. Another favorite of mine is the Boxtrot Spy, which 
actually kind of has some level of use. Valve added an emote that has you crawling around under a box like Snake from Metal Gear Solid. And you know we had to find a way to abuse that. So cue another six videos where I spent hours sitting on the objective, hiding under my cardboard box, watching the enemy look around in total confusion as to who was blocking them from capturing the point. All this is just scratching the surface. I haven't even begun to dig into the competitive scene, the lore, the stories behind the characters, the absolute insanity of the unusual hat and cosmetic market. Okay, wait, no, actually, I, I need to talk just a tiny bit about that. There are seriously entire servers where people sit all day and trade hats or even gamble tens of thousands of dollars spy crabbing. Basically, you just stand across from another player, do the default spy emote over and over. Normally, the emote throws a cigarette, but occasionally the spy crouches down and pretends to be a crab. First person to spy crab three times loses. Okay, moving on. Now, I wanted to end this video on what I think is TF2's biggest strength. It's community. If you ask me which community has the most dedicated players, the most high quality content creators, it is without question TF2. Some communities get sustained through hype around a new release or prize pools for their competitive scene or rabid weekly updates to keep the game interesting and players engaged. TF2's biggest prize pool last year was a little over $5,000. And unless you love localization files, the developers haven't dropped a real update in over six years. No real good update in over eight. Now that sucks. And this game does deserve better. When I started playing TF2, Valve was literally an inspiration. But over the last decade, I've grown to see them as kind of one of the most toxic. Continuing to monetize and profit off TF2 without providing almost a shred of support to the players who are keeping it alive, it just sucks. It feels like a lot of people in the TF2 community can exist under this fear that the game will die and something that is so important and so fun to so many people could be gone forever. And believe me, I know, when I finally hit a creative wall on TF2, which is where I started YouTube, and I couldn't think of a single new piece of content beyond Branch Relaxo episode 12 and started doing Overwatch instead. The word I heard most was Traitor. This isn't just a game that most people feel like people dip in and dip out of at a moment's notice. It is a family, a community. Honestly, I, I kind of got it. But here's the note I want to end on. For those of you who haven't played the game, I hope it serves as great reason to, when you're done watching this video, open Steam and download it. 16 years on from its release, with no support via updates or marketing or million dollar competitive prize pools, TF2 still hits a concurrent play account every day of over 100,000 people and hit its peak play account count only a few weeks ago. And on top of that, look at this graph. It's only growing. It only goes up. So for all you newbies who haven't gotten to experience this game yet, go to Steam, hit download, equip your gibbous, and come join Hightower because I need some more clips for my next Market Garden montage.